tonight's episode of Artisan Electrics, I grab a big pipe, Luke opens a small door, and Ruben wrestles a fridge. Let's get into it. So here's a little tip. When you get these out of the box, they'll come like cable tied up. So I just do this. I pull it from a t-shirt and it just straightens it out. As you can see, like those three there, compared to those ones there. And it just makes them easier to work with when you start putting them in the board. Good morning, guys. I'm still waking up, as you can hear, but we got this little board here in the garage that I've been set on. Literally just changed it. We're gonna change it to, I think we saw it in another video, the BG board that John put in. Uh, it's an IP rated board, just cause they've had issues with a few leakages. So I'm gonna make sure not to go top entry with any of it. Uh, but yeah, we'll just crack on with that and hopefully get it done this morning. So as you can see, we have possibly the crustiest light on earth. I mean, it's basically brown now. We are set to replace that with this. I know what you're thinking, that is tiny compared to that. And I agree, but it should give off the same amount of light and it's got a built-in PIR, so we can bin off the PIR that's in here already. And yeah, it should be a bit tidier. Oh, hi and welcome back. Let me show you my working quarters for today. It's a bit snug in here, I must admit, but hopefully it should be all right. Just briefly today, uh, my job is gonna be changing over this board for a new fuse box. Um, we'll be upgrading the tails and putting a nice little Rectu ice layer in. Oh, man, I've not green fingered that Ollie Bush hat. See this, Look. remove after installation. It just shows that people can't even read. It's just, ugh, people suck. Also, uh, smoke detectors. <laughs> is it though? <laughs> See, what's happened there is someone's got that out of another house and just roid it in here. I mean, you can tell by the professional job. I mean, is that skip wood there that it's mounted to? <laughs> Bro, why are you hating on my installation? <laughs> <laughs> Ruben's private jobs. <laughs> so what I'm just doing quickly is what most people probably do. I'm just looking at the board, writing down each circuit, the breakers they're currently on, and two of these circuits, I think it's the kitchen sockets and it's the upstairs sockets, they've actually got to be downgraded to a 20 amp breaker. So I'll also note that down as well, just when I'm putting all the new cables into the board. I bring them in the right side. So you obviously, if they're if they're on the on the first circuit, you don't want them on the opposite side of the board. Because then you've got to pull them all the way across. So yeah, it just helps out with the neatness of the board and dressing them in properly. So when I carried out the ECR, I found there was no earth on this lighting circuit. I found it first at this switch doing a one delete test. So if I just show you, if I go from the earth pin here to the uh, an earth socket, you can see the voltage I'm getting. So the touch voltage here is actually above 50 volts. So potentially if I touch this and that, I could get an electric shock. So it's not very clever. So we need to find the broken earth. It should be somewhere above this light or at the previous lights, which might be in the living room. Um, but yeah, just wanted to point that out to you guys. When you've got class one equipment, it can be quite dangerous, the touch voltages between them. So 80 volts, not good. So while the guys are carrying on with those fuse boards, I'm gonna be going around doing all the remedials that I found on the ICR. So this is the list I've got to get through. So my first thing I'm gonna tick off is here, investigate and rectify missing CPC, a dining room light switch. So this is one of these switches that hasn't got an earth. So there's no earth here and there's no earth in the kitchen. So I believe there's a break somewhere above. But if you look here, these are plastic lugs. So if you go around carrying out a wonder lead test like I did, I touched the screws and there's no earth, which made me take it off in the first place to test to the back box. You could argue that, to be honest, with these insulated lugs, it doesn't require an earth here. So these are old lugs where the cables never used to have a CPC in them. So they insulated the screws so that if it did touch the metal back box, the screws wouldn't become live. But as we've got to fix the CPC anyway, I'm going to try and take down these lights and see if there's a cable that's popped out that's going over towards the kitchen. And then if I fix this fault, it might already just fix the kitchen fault. I've got cramp right up in here two minutes. Oh. So this wiring system is three plate. So the lives that go into the lights it can generate more faults in all honesty because so many cables are there and then DIY Dave comes along and puts this light up, just kind of, yeah, roys it in. And then you can just break a CPC or one pops out of a connector block. 
Exhibit A. Oh dear. Let's try and get the loop down. Oh, there it goes. We'll check our earth connections here. So it looks like that's all our line connections in there. And then underneath this massive tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check that I've got earth here. Because Luke's working on the board, it's a bit more awkward. I'm gonna get him to put an R1, R2 link in. So away go across the terminals. If I've got an earth here, I'll get an R1, R2 reading. And then as I go through, hopefully every single one will have an R1, R2 reading. And when we turn it back on, that voltage we saw earlier will disappear. I don't know if this was done by an electrician or anyone, I'm not calling people out. It's just that most manufacturers, this is British home stores, which probably was bougie back in the day before it got closed down. Look at the space they've left for the cables. That's it. So this is why these sort of connections end up happening. And you can see these cables press right up against the metal plate here, ready to sort of rub and get through and then end up causing a fault later down the line. Manufacturers of light fittings need to be more sympathetic towards electricians because that getting that up there without crushing all the cables is very difficult so we've got a black cable in with our I assume is our commons we've got the same over there so i don't know if they've used the black as a common coming over for some reason not marked red it's a bit of a mangled mess i think that's the switch line there that's on its own we'll test here as well so i'm going to go between this connector block and these which one's the CPC there. And then if I get a reading, it's all hunky-dory and there isn't a break here. And then I can check the terminations and make sure all of the earths are connected in here and going away to the next line. That one's hanging down suspiciously though. That's why I always go around and do a wonder lead check, normally first thing, so that I can sort of, it gives me an idea, not only do I get the lay of the land, I can sort of get a feel for what's the matter and where I should start inspecting. So when I start touching these and I can see there's no earth, they need to be taken down for inspection. If there's a switch, socket, whatever it is, it kind of makes me narrow down on where, where the issues may be. So these lights have a fault as well. If I show you this on Tradeify. So here, investigate and rectify missing CPC and voltage fault on kitchen lighting circuit. So thanks to Tradeify for sponsoring this video. You can get a 14 day free trial with no credit card required. And if you like that, we've got a discount code below for 50% off your first three months. <laughs> Such a small cupboard. <laughs> This leftover scrap will definitely not be going in my Christmas pocket. So I've just taken the tape off of this light. And uh, as you can see here, these cables have popped out already. I'm not saying that is the fault, but it's just the connections are just getting twisted and turned and all pressed together. I'm just gonna take apart the other one as well. And while I'm doing that, we're checking with Ruben. So this is the board that I'm installing today. It's quite tidy, to be fair. It's just a little garage board. It's IP65, like I said, it's about the water problem. But to be honest, they said it's rare that they get like proper leaks and they've patched it up now anyway. But it's just in case you don't really want that metal rusting and getting wet and stuff like that. So I've drilled my holes out, I've put some stocking glands in, and yeah, just wiring now. taking down this light and as you can see it's just like I don't even know what this is it's like spider-man's been here and built a web or something out of cables three four five connections I can see right now and there's only two cables leaving it so I don't really know what's going on but because the new light that we're putting in has a PIR I don't think he's gonna be using the switches so we're just gonna roy all of it off just have a feed in and that should be blessed so while I'm dealing with this shonkiness go visit Luke and check up on him. Okay, so I've got the old board off. Um, I've just knocked out the holes to, for the cables to come into the rear of the board and put the grommet strip in. Um, I don't know if you can see, but they've already extended a few of these, like these earths, you can see they've got crimps on them. Um, that one's definitely gonna be too short. So yeah, they, I might have to extend a couple of them just so I can dress them nicely. But yeah, it's going well. Like I said, I've got the old one off. Trying to mount this board and I'll start dressing them through in the correct order through the back of the board. Right, as you can see from my headlamp, <laughs> pattern pending. <laughs> that is a uni light on the front, it's just the, the strap got really dirty. Um, so I'm just gonna, I've got the link in now that Luke's put in. So I'm just gonna go onto my common lives and onto my CPC and you can see I'm getting a reading. So that means there's continuity up to here. 
However, when I took this tape off, notice this. Hey, it will well, that's come out. <laughs> okay, so if you look here, you can see that CPC has been cut off for whatever reason. So that's a return from the switch. And then the black goes into the commons here. It doesn't matter if you do have these the opposite way around if that's marked, so that should be marked red. So I'm gonna strip all these back, re-terminate them in some Wagos, and then hopefully get that all back, and that's one fault fixed. So I've just noticed this actually as well. See this gray cable here, it's thinner than the rest. There's no CPC in this cable. It's an old tin copper cable. And I'm not sure where that goes. If that's the cable that feeds over to there, there will be no earth over there at all because there's no CPC in this cable. So I'll have to have a look into that. So on our adventures, we found that, as you can see, it's been a bit of damage on this cable. However, we are just gonna quickly slide some heat shrink over it. I know it's black, we don't have any white heat shrink on us. The reason I'm putting heat shrink instead of tape, because tape would essentially do the same thing, but it's not actually a permanent fix. Because with heat shrink, you need a tool to take it off, whereas with tape, you can obviously just unwind it with hand. So that's like the big difference. So I'm replacing the connector blocks with these lever connectors. I'm sure you've all seen them before. But you saw when I moved that, the cable's like popping out of that because the screw terminal crushes down on multiple cores. You imagine if it's like this, as they start moving, the cable starts shifting and then they, one will become loose and pop out. With these, they've got each, they've got an individual terminal. And I don't know if you can see down the barrel there, but it cr clamps onto the cable. So they've all got their individual terminal and they're much more, less likely to pull out. So they're all kind of in their way goes and ready to go up. Now I've got to fit all of those underneath that. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> Mad skills there, do you see that? You don't need a third arm. You just kind of balance it on your face, your shoulders and all sorts to try and get it up. I bet it goes bang now. <laughs> Let's have a little look over here. <laughs> we have nothing. <laughs> Oh wait, um, there we go. Never a doubt, never a doubt. <laughs> okay, so I've made up the board. Just my preference, I prefer doing it this way, making up outside. Because once it's fixed on it, it does take quite a bit of pulling that just to get all these tails in and things like that and get these nicely laid out. So I've got circuits one to five here and then six to eight and then nine, that's gonna need extending. But what I do is I separate them like this, just so you can bring them through one to five through this side. And like I said, six to eight and well, plus nine this side, just so it just makes it easier once you put it on, they all dress nicely and should correspond to the breakers. So all of the connections were loose and dodgy here, all the earths pulled out. So I'm gonna re-terminate re them all. So it's one cable in, one cable out, and the switch line. So it's just lives together in one, neutrals together, CPCs together, and the switch line on its own. What I'm hoping is that doing this has just fixed the other problems and the loose connection was here. If not, it's gonna be a lot of dusty ceilings coming down. There may have been a loose connection because lo loads of cables fell out of that light next door. Um, and that might have been the brake that was coming over to here. So I'm gonna check here on R1, R2. If I get a reading, it's fixed. If I haven't, I'm gonna have to start looking up above. Oh, sorry. Has it gone? Oh, yeah, it's gone over, okay. It's not looking good. No. Hmm. Okay, we have to look above. Oh, you just notice it's gonna break my fingers. <laughs> oh, let me strength max. What is this held in with? It's like there's someone up there holding on to the back of it. Do you know those cables go under the plaster? Here, and it goes under the plaster to that light. So they've wired these and then put the ceiling up on top of them. Like, jobs are good and why are people like this? Right, remember in there, there was that one small gray cable that didn't have a CPC. I reckon that's what comes over here. I've got my hand on a very small cable. If I can get the slack over here, when they rewired it, they just, Thought, oh no, I'm not gonna wire that bit. There it is, it's coming across here. So there's probably would have been a light here somewhere that's going across. So if I take that light down, I'll see if I can see a JB, but I think that's the issue. 
the CPC isn't continuous because there is no CPC in the cable. So to give you an idea, CPCs were introduced to cables in 1966, I believe. So that gives you an idea how old this cable is. This is where an EICR can only go so far to find things. So I thoroughly inspected what I could. But well, we're not here to fix issues, but now I am. And I'm finding more issues, like unable to get these lights up the ceiling. Oh my goodness, that's not coming out. You just know it's gonna go suddenly and then my fingers are gonna leave the chat. I reckon they put that up with a hammer to get that in. Come on. <laughs> it's raining ceiling. <laughs> what the hell is that? I've got my hand around like a big pipe. <laughs> that came out wrong. It's like a flexi sort of conduit -y pipe. <laughs> oh, I don't know if it's definitely gonna leave that in. I do have a, a camera for this, an inspection camera, but it leaves a lot to be desired. I think a black and white camera would be better than that. Oh, is that it? What's ironic is that I've gone to the effort of earthing this, but I didn't test it because there's no, there's no continuity. So even though it's there, it's not there. So I can feel a joint here. And by joint, it's like, that's a very loose term. It feels like one connector block, two connector blocks. Well, it's not even in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Where on earth is that? Oh God. Back to the van. <laughs> so I've just pulled this light over and I can feel a connector block around here. So if I just show you on the camera, this cable here is the one that's coming from this light. You can see the CPC is not actually connected. There's nothing coming out that side. And right in here, you can just see the red and black and there is a CPC connected, but it's only one cable and it's disappearing. So it's a case of, does that black cable go onto the original free plate that was here? Or is it just going off somewhere else? Cause these are new colors. So I really want to get to that and check if it has a CPC. There's a joist here and there's a joist somewhere here. So it's gonna be a void in the middle. And it's probably in that void where I'm not gonna be able to see it. This has got two cables in, one in, one out to there. So the JB's gotta be in here somewhere. So either do damage to the ceiling or we have to replace all the fittings for class two fittings. Let's go and have a word. Okay, so this is probably my 10th or 12th position now I've tried arrange my body to try and be able to do this. But yeah, this is what I'm finding best. Basically, as you can see, it's all up with the balls all on. Um, I've got all the RCBOs in. I still don't know, for me personally, whether I prefer putting them all in first or doing them one by one to put the RCBO in and, and then putting the cables in. Um, I've tried this again, it's gone in nice and neatly sort of thing. So I'm still undecided, but let me know what way you do it around. Do you put all your RCBOs in first or do you do them one by one? I'm gonna have to extend a few of them um, and I'll show you actually how I do that. So I found this on the EICR. It's just a blank plate missing off of that. So I'll go and grab one and that'll be another one ticked off the list. So I spoke to the customer and permission has been granted for me to do some exploratory holes. So. It looks like there's some kind of swirl here. Well, it might have been a repair. So I'm gonna pop a hole. Hopefully there was a light here. This might be the first of many holes. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to patch that to you. That's uh, the correct tool for the job. <laughs> Look at that, this is the standard that we're having to deal with. Nice. Now we've got to just guess how far away that is. What's that, that here? Yeah. Oh, why are people like this? Oh, look at it. I can see all the earths twisted together. You can see there. Some CPCs twisted there. There's some wrapped around that cable there. Don't know what's going on there. Do you know what they've done? <laughs> I bet they've just gone underneath that. Joyce. Yeah. They have, like, their, like they have done there. Yeah. yeah. I think Luke's right in what he's saying. It was. Um, I think they sort of broke away the sort of plaster on the top and left the wooden lattice in and then they just boarded straight up to it, which 
I suppose it gives you lots of points to fix to on the board, but... It's a point you want all that effort and you can start a clean slate and flat basketball or... Maybe it was really loose and they would like just tapped it with a hammer and it all come down in a one -er. Right, I'm gonna get a rough measurement of where that is and drill another roll. I wanna be the very best. Right, well, I mean, you can clearly see that the CPCs aren't connected, are they? So it's a, this is a bit of an imagination job. Remember I was saying about that old cable? There is an old cable here if that's the incoming one, then there is no earth here. So it looks like that's going to be all of our lives there. It's our permanent lives. And this looks like it's going to be all of our neutrals. Then we've got one cable. So it's an old gray cable. The live is coming into this connector block. And it's on the black of this one, which then returns on this one. So perhaps this is our returning switch line and then these ones are going off to order the lights. I'm gonna try and strip it down a bit more and try and get my head around it. Right, so the garage board is done. The only issue is we were given a 32 breaker when realistically we need 16, maybe a 20 amp. Uh, so at some point we'll have to go and get one of those, change that over. But the new light is installed, so I've rewired it just because there's no point trying to reuse the old cable. So I've clipped that along, along here into the light. Customer wanted it here. And I said to him that it might not pick him up till about this sort of area because of the range. But to be honest, he's got a bit of natural light there. And when he's coming through this side, the garage door should trigger it anyway. And I mean, you saw what you had before. Anything would be better than that. I think a little oil lamp would be better than that. Okay, after looking at this, I've had a little cry and um, I'm now recovered. So I think I was right in the first place. So that little gray cable that I saw coming across here is indeed that cable there, which then goes onto the switch line, which is this one, shoots down there, returns back up and goes onto these and disappears to other lights. I've got to confirm it with my, in, my tester on low ohm and bell out the cables, but I think that's the case. So the only options here is to rewire the leg coming from that light over to here to bring the CPC over, or it's a case of saying, right, no, there is no earth here, and we have only class two fittings, so replace these eight down lights and that switch for class two, and that switch there would have to have, I don't know if you've seen it before, there's like nylon screws that you can put on it, so there would be no, no chance of a current passing through it, or I don't know, plastic caps might make it class two. Let us know what you do in this position, would you, just sort of go, no, it needs rewiring, basing it on customers' budgets as well. The cost of us replacing these versus us rewiring it. Is it unsafe having no earth on it if it's all class two? It's, it's weighing that up. So let us know what you would do. All right, so basically, because the garage is all done, I've just started going around, just looking at all the remedials that have got to get done, like this, for instance. There was basic insulation on the pendant, so we're just changing over the pendant because to be honest, it was a bit manky anyway. And there's a few bits like that where it's just changing switches, changing spurs, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna plod along doing those. I need to lie down again, I'm really sorry. I feel like when you have a school photo. I've just got two circuits left to put in, they're the lighting circuit. John's currently working on them and needs the R1 and R2 linked out, sorry, the R1 and RN linked out, so. I'm just waiting for him to finish his fault finding on there and I can just put those away. It's just two lighting circuits and also the RCBA fly leads. So while he's doing that, I thought I'd start working on this. I'm literally just putting the isolator here. So obviously it'll come out from your meter. It'll free round to this isolator so you can turn it on and off as well as your main switch. And then it'll go up and straight into your fuse board. Okay, so I've kind of figured out what's going on here. The incoming live, not sure where that goes. It's a mystery. However, it does return on the switch live on the blue cable comes up to these lights here. So I need to just get them all together and keep them together, those three cables and these three neutrals. And then I'm just gonna keep that link in even though it doesn't appear to go anywhere. But I'll keep it in. I'm not just gonna razz that up in the ceiling. I've got to try and get this encapsulated. This cable is about, see that red cable here? That's how much length I have. And the insulation doesn't start till back there. And the rest seem pretty okay to get into the joint. So I'm gonna be faffing about with that. So while I'm doing this, you might as well go and see what Ruben's up to. So we're above these cupboards in the bedroom and 
these two patches have been damaged, so I'm just replacing them for these two new ones. But look at how this has been roided in, man. There's actually a gap behind, if you can see. Um, so I might just try to break out the back of one of these for this one and fish them all down the back so that they're not coming in every which way. The cable here is way too short and I don't want to break out the ceiling to try and get to the base of it. So what I've done is I've put a through crimp on it here. I'm going to slide this heat shrink over all of the basic insulation and shrink this down so it's covering the whole bit. So it's essentially just one bit of cable, which then means there's no basic insulation above. And then all of these, I'm hoping to just kind of get into a whisker box or Wago box, whatever they're called. <laughs> and um, yeah, just in case people thought I was shoving connectors up in the ceiling, I'm trying to make the best of a bad situation here. So as you see, can see, I've been working in here all day and I've had to change positions probably 100 times a day, in and out, lying on my front, my back, sitting down on my knees and that. So I've been using these, I mean these are very very cheap and they're probably one of the best things I own to date sort of thing. Even just doing sockets and that, leaning down like this sort of thing, they're brilliant, they save your knees. I mean I have knee pads as well but sometimes it's nice just to have that bit more cushion. So yeah, I def definitely recommend, if you're interested it'll be in the description below. Okay, so this is the board finished. Um, we've put some new towels in that, they're not all securely clipped, so I've still got to put some cable bases and some cable ties around the tails, etc. But yeah, I'm really happy with it overall. I didn't have to extend any cables, which is, I, I always aim for that, obviously, because it's just another point of weakness and things like that. So if I can dress them in a slightly different order like this, the one I've left on the far left is for the garage. So as you can see, that was, that's the reason why I've left two blanks here and put it there just so I don't have to extend it. So it's quite a large cable as well, but yeah, I just dressed them nicely. They're all the fly leads. I just put, always put a little cable tie around that just to lean it up. But yeah, I'm just gonna put a bit of fire seat as well in the back in there. And the same with these, I'm gonna put some nice cable bases, clip them all nice and neatly. And yeah, just be a yeah, overall very happy with it. fix one of the two faults in here these are all earth now but as I said before the light going from here the cable beg your pardon going over to here has no CPC in it so I can't fix that unfortunately so we're just going to replace them at a later date thanks for watching guys catch you next time